is the sport of passing the baton. And uh, I think our whole team is learning it very well. After you dream something, start, you know, start to see it happening, growing, and then happily, you know, daily just to passing it to, to the hands of your most trusted, most worthy people. Uh, that brings the greatest satisfaction in life. And all of us in our own ways are playing this game. I ask you, I request all of you to continue playing this game. Although the concept of telemedicine in this country started long back, uh, maybe we are relatively more active in telemedicine activities for you know, slightly more than a decade. And for this, we should be really very, very thankful to two giants. One is Professor Shimizu. He's just here. Physically, he's not a giant. He's a giant in all other aspects. And other giant is Professor Ha Sung Han of Seoul National University. And to breathe us with them, it was the founders of Andren. Dr. Bushan and many others. Some of them are here. Most of them are not here. So after expressing our gratitude to the Zans, these wonderful people, uh, I should thank you all. For me, being in telemedicine activities is not just following some fashion in technology. It's not like a happy child playing with some new gadget, new toy. Getting really involved in telemedicine, it's much more than that. In some of our own Nepali tradition, we talk a lot about compassion. We talk a lot about Bodhisattva nature. And that means being a warrior not to kill people, but getting outside your comfort zone to reach the needy people. If you hear cry somewhere, you are ready to get up at midnight from your warm bed and go to help the people. Telemedicine is exactly that. Most of the times we make a mistake that development, growth, all these things is nothing more than, you know, some material things. We, ha we, our human existence is really, really wonderful. We can do so much of things. We can create so many new equipments, new gadgets, you know, new infrastructure. We can do so much of things. But to make it really work for us, we need something else. Definitely brain, but also heart. If you don't know the art of loving, most of your health activities will have no meaning. <coughs> In <coughs> those people, the wonderful younger colleagues with whom I have been uh, so fortunate to work with, who make me so happy, when they enter our department, there are a few mantras you know, that it, they hear in the very beginning of their entrance. One is that your patients are not broken machines and you are not mere mechanics to fix them. There is, you know, much more profound 
uh, texture, profound, you know, essence in the relationship between a healer and uh, a healthcare seeker. They are also told that I often quote uh, a line from Heaven Trevino in his, from his book, The Tao of Healing, that a healer offers love and nurtures the soul. A physician offers love, offers concern, and treats the body. But a procedure is glares at the patient and imposes procedure. Telemedicine, if that is just limited to technology and gadgets, I'm afraid that we will go more towards the direction of the procedures than towards the direction of the healer. While passing the baton to newer generation, I wish that with the baton of technology, you also carry the soul of, you know, the, the essence of healthcare. Human health, you know, has been partially rightly, rightly, but only partially rightly understood in biomedical domain. But we all understand that all our human activities finally, you know, finally they translate into human health or happy nation, you know, and everything. Whatever we do, if that is not translated into our human health, if we are after, you know, say achieving something, we get very much depressed. If we want to go and commit suicide after achieving, is that achievement? So all our human activities to be really meaningful, we need, you know, to see that that's translated into good human health. Such an important thing, if that is just, you know, limited in, in very, you know, physical, very material, only biomedical aspect, then we'll be doing nothing. Therefore, from the be very beginning, we have been urging and urging ourselves and you know others to try to raise the needy through telemedicine activities. I see you know so many talented people, most of them you know my younger colleagues, uh, who are very good in knowledge, who are very good in skill who know all the magics of information technology, who know how to, you know, operate anything you give them. So I don't have any doubt that you will be, you know, great uh, healthcare providers. But then, you know, getting old, sometimes, you know, the old age is really, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting, it's enjoyable, but sometimes, you know, you have to pay the cost of, you know, unnecessary concerns. And now, some of my unnecessary concern is that, you know, what if these wonderful people, they sometimes forget the, the, the meaning of the heart, meaning of the soul, meaning of compassion, of love, from your smiling faces, I can see that, you know, you are telling me, oh, old man, you talk too much. We know what we have to do. I really hope that from now on, we are entering a new stage and that telemedicine for us will be translated as being available to the needy in most remote areas, most forgotten areas. And I hope that your wonderful technology will help in that. Uh, thank you very much.
Thank you, Professor Dital. Uh, what a wonderful way to begin the begin the workshop. Uh, it's always a nice uh, hearing the speech of uh, Dr. Professor Dital. It always makes us uh, motivated and spellbound. And uh, we, we hopefully all our young colleagues uh, will carry the baton. And uh, with the new technology, hopefully uh, it will be further uh, good for our our country. So. Uh, moving on to our next next, uh, we will be having two keynote speakers. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, the first one uh, need no introduction among among us. Uh, Professor Simiju. Professor Simiju is a surgeon uh, who graduated from Kyushu University, Fukuoka, Japan. He is the director of the Department of uh, Endoscopic Diagnostic and Therapeutics at uh, Kyushu University. Uh, Professor Simiju is also the chairman and professor of International uh, Medical Develop Department at the university and also the director of the Telemedicine Development Center, TEMDEC of Asia, where for more than a decade uh, he has facilitated a comprehensive telemedicine project. This project has widely spread in Asia Pacific region and is gradually extending globally. Uh, now the project has collaboration with 614 institutions in 63 countries and has already recognized over 900 programs. Professor Simizu has uh, invited more than 300 young doctors and technical staff from all over the world for medical and engineering training as a director of Overseas Exchange Center. Professor Simizu has also been leading EPAN Medical Working Group since 2005. He has also started Asia Telemedicine Symposium in 2007, where both doctors and engineers gather to share the knowledge and information and to find out the solution of the problem in common. So let's give a big round of applause for Professor Simizu. So good morning, everybody. And thank you very much, uh, Sudip, for the very kind and detailed introduction. <laughs> and I'm very happy to be here uh, meeting many uh, people who get together from all across the country. And the, uh, I really uh, like to express my appreciation to the organizing uh, committee members to make this happen today. And uh, although the Dr. Sudip uh, introduced me as a keynote speaker, but according to the program, you see I'm supposed to uh, make an opening remarks, <laughs> not a, a keynote speech. So, uh, but I'd like to introduce, uh, use uh, some slides to introduce you what uh, we have done or uh, what we are thinking uh, right now. Okay, so. Uh, this is a very a typical uh, slide uh, of the teleconference, uh, which uh, we did just uh, last month. And you see the Dr. Saroj uh, Dital uh, is in the center, and the Dr. Udaya sitting on his uh, left side. And uh, this time, we uh, connected uh, Durikel, Patan, uh, Pokhara, uh, Chari Kot and the Center of the Rural Healthcare and Telemedicine. And in Korea, Dr. Josi uh, chaired this session and we also connected to India. This, uh, I think this picture, this shot was very nice to me because, you know, uh, you know, uh, one big reason is that uh, Dr. Dital is in the center, you know, leading all this uh, teleconference. But uh, before uh, making these uh, attractive programs, we first uh, visited uh, Kathmandu uh, three, uh, almost three years ago uh, now, uh, 16 uh, November. At that time, we had a, a group of four people, uh, you know, myself and the engineers and the coordinators uh, visiting not only Kathmandu Model Hospital, uh, but uh, Tripuban University and Patan and Ministry of Health and uh, Kiltipul and NREN and something like that to know the people, to know the current situation of the Nepal and what we can do next to discuss. 
And after that, we had a, a various things to move step forward. One is this uh, on-the-job training. Because as introduced, to, I'm uh, leading the uh, APAM meeting, a uh, Asia Pacific Advanced Network meeting, uh, which held uh, twice a year. So we uh, first invited some doctors and engineers to the Philippine uh, meeting, which was held early uh, 16. And uh, there was uh, uh, Dr. Pradeep and Sudeep and Gujan. Uh, and uh, also uh, the, this year's meeting, we invited Nirajan, Anish, and Dr. Josie and Rojan. You know, we are uh, uh, very much having a human exchanges like this. And also, we did uh, invite uh, Niraj and Rojan to the train the trainer meeting, which was held in my university of Japan for a month. And I hope uh, they learned a lot during that time. And we also had uh, uh, Asia Pacific Symposium last year in my uh, university, where we invited Dr. Udaya and Rajan uh, for the presentations. So after all these uh, activities, we did uh, have uh, big progress uh, uh, as shown in this slide. So we are having lots and lots of collaboration with the Asian countries, you know, also beyond uh, Asia. But uh, this slide only shows the Asian countries, and you see that Indonesia is by far the most active uh, country to having uh, over 400 uh, participation uh, during the you know uh, 10 years or something like that and followed by China Thailand and something like that and the Nepal is in this brown you know until uh, 2016 we started collaboration the number is very very small but during these two years as you see the you have a very sharp uh, increase and the, the, the angle of the increase seems to be number two just to follow uh, the Indonesia. So I hope this, uh, you know, angle will sharp, you know, um, you know, increase uh, more sharp, you know, in the coming years. And this shows the list of the hospital we, Temdek, collaborating with in Nepal. So you see the Kathmandu Model Hospital uh, started the collaboration with us 2012. And uh, during the uh, several years, only Kathmandu Model Hospital was our counterpart in the telemedicine activities. But uh, now, these just a couple of years, the numbers uh, you know, increased a lot. You see the pattern uh, had uh, you know, uh, uh, participated 21 uh, first times so far. And then you see the, uh, I actually don't know all of them, but uh, Qtipo, for example, Dulikel, and Tilganga, and the Tripvan, and the uh, B Hospital, and something like that. So now we have as many as 28, uh, you know, uh, participants sharing the, our programs together. And we, uh, we, when we map it, you can see the, it's growing. You know, not so many uh, hospitals in the rural area yet, but with the Kathmandu in the center, you know, I, you know, you know, there is no doubt that it's increasing geographically as well. But we do want many more to join in Nepal. So this is the last slide, but uh, I strongly believe that there are the three key things for the success. One is access, second is needs, and the third is skill. What are they? The access is the internet. And I believe the internet access is a very hard part, especially in Nepal, with lots of mountains and lots of rural areas. But I strongly hope that the engineering people here help us to get the connection to many, many places across this country. And the second needs is from doctors. You know, only with the uh, internet, without any needs from doctors, means anything, means nothing, you know? 
So only with the doctor's needs, we can make the telemedicine many, uh, very meaningful. So we do want the doctors collaborate and make a major role in this telemedicine activity. And the third is the skill. This is for the engineering people. Because the telemedicine is a kind of new field, so that not so many engineering people are uh, not uh, you know, well educated, especially in the hospital. So that's why we have had lots of engineering uh, program where we uh, had a lots of uh, engineers to learn, share the experiences, and uh, learn you know, troubleshooting uh, uh, something like that. So today, with all of us here in this venue, I would like to know many things uh, from you and to share the information together and uh, want to discuss what we can do next. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Simizu. Uh, now, hopefully, with your guidance and with the help of members of telemedicine in Nepal, with the help of tele uh, members of telemedicine Nepal, in Nepal, we uh, hopefully uh, telemedicine will be expanded, and the services uh, will be provided uh, in every region of the country. Thank you so much. Now, with that gratitude being expressed, I would like to welcome Professor Dr. Ho Seong Han for delivering opening remarks remotely from Seoul, South Korea. Rosendai, could you please help? Good morning, dear friends. Professor Ho Seung Han is professor and chairman of Department of Surgery in the Seoul National University Bundang Hospital. Professor Han was the first surgeon to perform right poster posterior sexonectomy and central bisexonectomy for hepatocellular carcinoma laparoscopically. He also performed the world's first laparoscopic liver resection in pediatric patients and succeeded in, succeeded in total laparoscopic right side donor hepatotomy, hepatectomy. Former chairman of board of director of Korean Society of Surgical Oncology, president of Korean Society of Surgical Metabolism and Nutrition, Korean Society of Traumatology, and president of Korean Study Group of Pancreatic Surgery. Professor Han is the current president of Korean Study Group of Laparoscopic Liver Surgery and chairman of board of director of Korean Endoscopic and Laparoscopic Surgeons. Professor Han is actively involved in telemedicine activities and has been performing teleconferences and telelife surgery for more than a decade. Now let's welcome uh, Professor Ho Seong Han. Please give him a round of applause. Uh, thank you very much for your kind introduction. And uh, it, is, uh, it is my great honor and pleasure for me uh, to speak in the second uh, Tenements workshop. Actually, I was supposed to speak a welcoming uh, remark, but uh, because I have five or ten minutes, so I will uh, speak uh, some uh, slides before. Actually, uh, I see it uh, thorough detail now. <laughs> the right, right side of thorough detail. And also, I saw the Udaya and the Dr. Shimizu. And uh, oh, Udaya, yes, Udaya, thank you very much. So, uh, can I show my s slides first? Uh, sorry, uh, <clears throat> uh, as I said, uh, uh, I know, as far as I know, 
the Nepal is the leading country in telemedicine uh, activity. I think my friend uh, Soroy Dita is the key person in this activity. So uh, I'd like to uh, uh, <coughs> express my sincere gratitude and respect for his dedication and contribution. And uh, also, uh, he has uh, many colleagues like uh, Udaya, and also many. And also, he sends uh, uh, the, his fellow COVID Nepal to us. So we are very close. Thank you very much. And uh, we have uh, uh, together enjoyed uh, uh, very much activity in Nepal. This is Apan at uh, Dalian uh, last year. So thank you very much. When I <coughs> uh, when I met uh, Professor Oidita, I was very impressed by his devotion, dedication, and his uh, uh, very clear and frank-minded uh, his philosophy. So uh, I think uh, this is the uh, this is the reason that the Nepal leads the technical activity. Today I will introduce our activity a little. Actually, we are doing a uh, telemedical activity like tele lecture and tele live surgery. So tele education is very important because uh, we can share knowledge between Korea, between Nepal and Japan and many countries. We can share knowledge and we can share international network and activate network as well. And also we can promote collaborative effort. This is a teleconference is very important. Actually, without teleconference or telecollaboration, we have to travel. This may cost, but we can save the cost. And we have to travel, but it can, we can save time. And we can do anywhere by this activity. And also by using IT and the medical knowledge, we can uh, collaborate uh, this medical knowledge by IT. <clears throat> Actually, uh, Seoul National University Bundang Hospital is the site where many uh, physicians from the world is uh, visiting. So we are uh, we are around uh, now 2019 around 500 uh, physician has uh, visited uh, our hospital. Uh, this is a uh, actually not update. Until 2016, uh, there are many doctors from all over the world, including Japan. Uh, many has come to uh, my hospital to learn uh, some surgery or knowledge. <coughs> so this number is very much increasing. But I think uh, uh, it may cost money and time. So education process is well uh, providing uh, solution university hospital. So we can do tele lecture, we can do tele live surgery, and we can do workshop as well. So this is a demonstration of the 4K. So 4K can be demonstrated from all over the country and even from overseas. Uh, this is the system of OR network system. So this is the <coughs> OR operation theater where I was uh, operating every day. Uh, in this OI system, we can connect to anywhere, including Nepal and any country. So sometimes we can do education as well. So this is very convenient. So this is important. So we are in APAN meeting, we are doing HVP collaboration uh, uh, very actively. Uh, in this uh, collaboration, Nepal is the champion. So this is the photo of a telemedical lecture. And also we can uh, give a lecture there is in uh, Nepal and many countries as well. And also we can do live surgery. So any live surgery can be transmitted from our hospital to any country, including Nepal. So this is very convenient to uh, to to transmit any <clears throat> any live surgery and share the knowledge. So the live surgery may provide the cutting edge technique. And also engineer is very important. Engineer support us 
by uh, by the supporting us, this medical IC network system can be complete. Also, we uh, used to have a MTC workshop. Uh, this is a, a medical telemedicine uh, workshop. So Nepal is the key country uh, in this workshop as well. So Solution University uh, tried to be more cooperative by telemedical education, and we'd like to contribute to share medical knowledge. So I think the Nepal is very, uh, very important, very excellent uh, uh, collaborator with us. So in this time, I'd like to appreciate uh, my friend Solo Editor and uh, Udaya and many friends in Nepal. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Han, uh, uh, for your wonderful speech. Uh, hopefully, the collaboration with the uh, Seoul National University will broaden further to different institutes of Nepal, and uh, we can share knowledge uh, uh, among the various medicine and the engineering also. So uh, before moving to our workshop proper, uh, we will have a short five-minute break. So I'd like to request all the presenter who are going to speak in the session one to please submit their PowerPoint if they have not done. So we'll see you in five minutes. Thank you. I'm going to read it. I'm
My test. Uh, Kyushu University, can you hear me? This is the main venue. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Um, oh, but please, can you increase your microphone level? How about now? Oh, um, just a little bit more, please. How about now? Okay, thank you very much. Welcome back. We are beginning the session one, uh, role of engineering in telemedicine here. Please be seated. Uh, before we begin, a uh, short reminder to all the participants that all your uh, presentation will be uploaded in the Temdec, uh, Temdec uh, homepage in a PDF format. So if any presenter who do doesn't want to upload their presentation in the Temdec, you have to contact our engineer, uh, Sintaro Ueda. So, okay. So uh, we'll begin the session one, role of engineering in telemedicine. Uh, in this session, like uh, the network and the engineer from various hospitals will make presentation focusing on their hospital network environment, network and uh, system related problem they have been facing and their plan to strengthen the hospital network so that they can do better delivery of telemedicine services. Uh, for this session, I'd like to request uh, Mr. Lotan Lal Amatya, uh, Chairman of uh, NREN, to kindly chair the session. And we will also have uh, Ms. Kuriko Kudo, uh, Engineer and CDO from Temdec Japan. She will be chairing the session remotely from QC University Japan. Thank you, Dr. Sudip Sakya. Uh, the session is very interesting, especially for me, because I am from a telecom background. And that's why I'm very happy and thankful to the organizer to uh, making me available as a chair for the chairing of the session. And we have this Kuriko Kudo, who will be also chairing remotely from Kyushu University Hospital. We welcome you. And as the time is very tight, we have to finish by uh, 11.20. And we have a lot of uh, paper presenters. 
and the time given for each presenter is 10 minutes. I request all the presenters to limit, complete their presentation by eight minutes and two minutes for, uh, if time permits, uh, Q&A session. Uh, definitely, uh, engineering role for this telemedicine is one of the key factor for successful delivery of telemedicine services and helping doctors for making the delivery very successfully. Uh, I hope uh, all the technical team working in the hospitals in telemedicine networks are working very hard to make it, make it success. But still, there are a lot of constraints, especially in this part of the world. Uh, that's why we will be uh, sharing experience and the constraint and the plan they have in future to improve this uh, engineering network. Uh, with this remark, I would like to request first our paper presenter, Mr. Rosen Sai. Uh, he is the IT system admin in Kathmandu Model Hospital, FET, Nepal, and his paper will be Role and Challenges in Telemedicine. Hello everyone, I'm Rosen Sai and I'm IT person and work as a telemedicine engineer for Fake Nepal. <coughs> Introduction of, of my organization, Fake Nepal is a not-for-profit not national level non-government organization committed to health development. It was established in 1991, affiliated to the Social Welfare Council Nepal. Uh, two, runs, two hospitals run by Fake Nepal, one is Kathmandu Model Hospital and other is Kritipur Hospital. There are some pictures of Kathmandu Model Hospital, some pictures from Kritipur Hospital. Uh, Kathmandu Model Hospital and Kritipur Hospital were connected through VLAN for access data, software, and servers. We are using two internet bandwidth, bandwidth and a network for video conference and commercial network for office use. There are three telemedicine centers run by Fake Nepal. Kathmandu Model Hospital, Center for Rural Health Care and Telemedicine, CRST MACD. Uh, regular conference, conference with remote sites. Uh, re regularly conference with remote sites. It, uh, objective to provide urban health care facilities to the rural health areas, currently connected to the 10 rural sites and various national and international hospitals. Uh, video conference, conferencing with international universities such as QC University and Seoul National University Hospital. Networking partners, we are using NN Network for video conference. With support of NN Engineer, we set up telemedicine in village of Magdi district, Samar, Sikha, Tikot, Nagi, Pozwar, Ramche, and Ola. These are some pictures. And we have to walk for five hours to reach one village to another village. Daily, we have, we, we have to walk for five hours. Some experience. I was invited as a trainee and chief engineer for rural healthcare session in Epan 45, Singapore. Participant as a trainee and chief engineer for rural healthcare session. 28 days training by Temdek, learned from Temdek team that how the telemedicine event is realized. In EPAN 47, uh, I was invited as a TET program, program supervisor and venue engineer. Uh, 
then this is my contact information thank you thank you uh, rozanji we are expecting some of the uh, your experiences and challenges you have faced uh, during implement this one from an engineering point of view definitely you have to work four hours five hours but definitely there are some other challenges also to make successful of this communication network not so not so much uh, challenges but there are uh, some internet from, to, from remote, remote sites there are always there are no good power backup and internet that's it thank you uh, from the audience if you have any queries to him yeah one query please uh there for commercial or uh, telemedicine uh, two mbps yes yes Can I can I ask a question, Doctor and Mr. Lutan? Yes. Uh, can I ask a question? And uh, this is Kuriko from Kyushu. Yes. Yes, yes please, Kuriko. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, in your Hector Nepal activity, what kind of uh, uh, activity are you doing? Uh, only the uh, only teleconference or live demonstration or only teleconsultation? Only teleconference. Teleconference. Is that case conference? Yes, yeah, sometimes. So, uh, how, um, what kind of uh, contents uh, do you supporting? For the, it's a tele lecture for remote sites from our hospitals. Okay, so in, uh, almost the activity is within your network in Nepal. Yes. So, are you using the movie clip or slide? Including no, not the, movie. Not movie. Not movie clip. Not movie but clip. The, you are transmitting the uh, medical contents, uh, yeah. such as uh, image or yeah, image and the present PowerPoint presentation. That's it. I see. And we so, are using S three two three for remote uh, sites. Yeah. Oh, you are using it suitably for remote remote sites. Also, uh, for remote sites, it means uh, for local sites. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but uh, all remote sites using the H three three. Yes. I see. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think with this uh, query, I think uh, we should give a big applaud to Rosen Sai. Thank you. The next presenter is from Nepal ESR Ecosystem and Roadmap. Do you have any announcement? Oh, I'd like to invite Mr. Sanjay Powder. Uh, he's a senior system engineer from Nyaya Health, Nepal EHR. Uh, he will be giving presentation on Nepal EHR ecosystem and roadmap of integrated healthcare delivery.
Good morning, um, I respect the chairman, uh, distinguished de delegates, uh, my colleagues, friends, and all the health IT professionals as well as the uh, clinic clinical professionals. So um, I'll be covering with uh, Nepali HR, what is, the, uh, what, what is it about, um, what is the roadmap uh, going through uh, next year, and uh, users experience, um, why we are uh, starting to build the uh, electronic health record system which aligns with the Nepal's healthcare model. Um, so let me start with the introduction with the Nepal ESR. Nepal ESR is the open source uh, healthcare information system uh, which follows the all, all the Nepal government's uh, HMS protocol um, as well as the clinical protocol of the uh, Nepal government. It consists of the four different components. Um, uh, one is the OpenMRS, uh, it's the clinical module. Uh, clinical module, OpenMRS, is the open source medical record system, uh, basically built by the Indiana University and is open to all the users in the community. And is connected with the uh, lab system, which is also the open source. Uh, the, the technology is the OpenELIS system. OpenELIS is the lab laboratory management system and is uh, maintained by University of Washington and is open to all the users as well as the implementers. On top of that, we have the digital X-ray packs for which we use the DICOM uh, services uh, and open ERP for the supply chain management and the dispensary of the medicine. So these are the four components. On top of that, uh, through the Nepal EHR uh, team, we have integrated the DHIS2 government reporting system so DHIS2 is the government's uh, HMIS reporting system recently uh, implemented in the, all the government facilities. Uh, it's the national level uh, reporting system. So th this is the uh, area, re registration area, uh, basically which aligns with the government's HMIS form. This is digitalized form. Uh, so one of the clinicians using the Nepal ESR through the Chromebook. We use the Chromebook for the end using device as the end using devices. Uh, this is the clinical module and this is the dashboard of the patient. Uh, you can see the lab results, uh, active visit notes, uh, vitals, uh, conditions, uh, and the underlying other uh, uh, treatment that, uh, we, that the clinical uh, part carries out with the uh, patients. Uh, basically, this uh, behind this uh, dashboard is the OpenMRS, as I said. Uh, OpenMRS is the core module for this. Uh, this is as the PACS, uh, which is integrated with the OpenMRS. Um, all the digital X-rays are integrated with the OpenMRS um, and its dashboard. Uh, lab results, uh, which ref reflects to the open ALIS system, laboratory management system. Um, you can see the different programs like Motherwood, Safe Motherwood program, HIV, um, and all the other uh, clinical uh, decisions that has been taken as a part of care. Uh, this is form. Uh, this is the uh, HMS form, uh, which we have built on top of the Nepali HR uh, through the uh, OpenMRS module. Uh, for the supply chain management, we use the OpenERP, uh, which is open source module um, itself and is customized as per the requirement of the Nepal's uh, supply chain management for the government hospitals. Uh, this is the DHIS2 uh, submission completed uh, status. So this is integrated with the co current uh, OpenMRS module uh, and is being implemented in the uh, different government hospitals. So this is the core architecture of the uh, system. As I said, lab is the OpenELIS, clinical is the OpenMRS, radiology packs, and supply chain for the open ERP. So these all are integrated and is connected to each other uh, through the atom feed uh, uh, data transfer. And uh, next roadmap is the community, co is to connect the community services where the mobile health platform will be there. Uh, currently being used by Naya Health uh, and, the pro uh, and the platform is Comcare. Uh, dashboard and insurance is the other priority that we are working on. Currently being used in the Bayalpata Hospital in Atham, um, Sarikot Hospital, and then in Noakot, recently we implemented this. Uh, this is the roadmap, billing, insurance, analytics dashboard uh, for the metabase uh, inpatient module and serial health record. Definitely serial health record is the big uh, uh, term, but we, we are planning to build the infrastructure, infrastructure as well as the terminology service for that. So this is the implementation success. Uh, to implement the ESR in the any of the facility, these are the key parameters that we need to keep in mind. Then only the uh, health record will be succeeded. Uh, how to get, uh, this is the GitHub, uh, this is openly available, you can use in your facilities, 
and you can get the a minimal installation through this hardware, but uh, it's dependent with the uh, implementation plan. Uh, thank you. If any question, uh, all is welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sanjayji. Uh, the floor is open for your queries. Hello. <clears throat> so with this EHR, uh, can we um, share that data with, uh, if we have, let's say, if we have national insurance program, that the government insurance program that we have, uh, for that we need to submit the, uh, the data as well to claim uh, for insurance claims and all. So can we use this uh, EHR system to send those data to the insurance, government insurance as well to claim? Um, for for the treatment or all these things that we provide, is uh, it possible uh, so far? It's, I, I, I'm not sure if it's been worked out. Thank you, Dr. Chidis. Um Yes. So as I mentioned, um, there are two government programs that is being uh, kept in the roadmap of the next year for the fiscal year 1920. Uh, one is already completed at the DHIS2 reporting system, and another one is the uh, insurance system. So insurance system, Nepal government uses the open EMIS, which is also the open source. And last year, uh, open EMIS was officially rolled out from the National Health Insurance Board. So that is the roadmap. Uh, we expect to deliver that by end of this year. But uh, some prototypes has already built. Uh, I can uh, show you <laughs> the demo offline. Yeah, we can do that. So that is the roadmap actually. Next. Take to register the patient. Sorry. For registration of patient, how long it will take time? Uh, so uh, one minute max uh, for two, two to three patient. So uh, as per the use case, what what we have seen in Boyle Pata in Sarikot Hospital is within one minute we we can do three to four patient, two to three patient. But depends like how much demographic information that we we are going to collect with the patient. Okay, and uh, how about the data you will have in the local server, or it will be in the net? So this is on-premises uh, solution. We, we don't use in the we don't use the cloud solution for this. Okay, yeah. thank you. Hello. Yeah. First of all, I really liked your presentation. It was really eye-opening for me. Uh, what I, I was really got confused with something like you were talking about open data for everything, but about HIPAA, similar to what the US has for HIPAA. Like, as a patient, I would not like to share my information to everyone, right? Yeah. As a provider, I'll not share my info, my patient information with anyone. What do you have in there in the system, like to control privacy, any security points, or anything you have there? Because at US. All the EMR are compliance with HIPAA compliance. Yeah. I will take it offline. Thank you. So this is something like uh, which aligns with the policy of the Nepal government as well. Uh, so for, for now, uh, how we have protected the data is one thing is that for, the, for the physical security, we use the on-premises system. Uh, technical binding is always there. Firewall, encryption, uh, encapsulation of the data is obviously there. But besides that, for the personal health information, uh, we are also waiting the uh, policy support from the government. So how we protect the data in the national level. Let's suppose we are not the only one who, is, who implements the ESO, right? There are other medical uh, record system as well. So how to bind all these uh, different vendors and uh, as you said, how to align that uh, with the national policy. That is the next challenge and also we are getting, we are expecting the support from Nepal government. Hi, um, I would like to address that question that previously asked. Um, there are two different concepts. Uh, the uh, software being open source doesn't necessarily mean the data would be open source as well. That's number one. And number two is uh, uh, there are certain, I, I'm from uh, Am People Hospital. I work there. And when we uh, thought about 
doing this e uh, electronic health records and all, one of the most important concern for me was about uh, patient data, where it will be stored. And I actually visited one of the sites that he mentioned, Story Code Hospital, to see how they are storing their data. And they showed their local uh, server. And then they also mentioned that they have another server in Kathmandu where every midnight they would uh, do the backup. And that, that really reassured me because I didn't want any of my patients data living on some offshore server somewhere. And that is also not uh, condoned by these Nepalese government policies. Uh, Nepalese government policy would not allow any of our patient data leave offshore servers. That's one thing for data protection. And obviously, there will be, as uh, from the engineering or software point of view, as you mentioned, there will be uh, firewalls and all these things. Open source software is one concept, and the data protection is entirely different. And I'm sure uh, the provisions have been taken on that uh, respect as well. Thank you, Dr. Sitis. Thank you. I think uh, Ms. Kuriko Kudo has some queries, some observation. Hello, Doctor. <laughs> I don't have any question. Thank you. Thank you. I think we will be discussing in our uh, last session uh, about how in, in detail, and we will uh, discuss on this part in detail. I think we have enough time at, during that time. Uh, now we should give a big applaud to Mr. Sanjay Thank, Thank you. you. Next presentation will be uh, from Rotarian Mr. Azang Bandari. He's a system engineer, and he will be uh, talking about telemedicine in Calicut from the technical aspect. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you uh, for giving me this uh, opportunity to speak about my previous experience regarding this telemedicine project. Like before sharing my this presentation, I would re like to share my stories because because I'm in front of my mentor, our guru, our technical guru, Dr. Lan Avante, sir. And you know, for for most of the healthcare professionals, you know. Sarod, Dr. Saro Dital, like a mentor, like a guru. For our, for our, for us also, Dr. Lal Amatesar is a mentor and guru too. So let me share the stories of this telemedicine, which we have done in, which I personally was in the uh, doing this telemedicine just uh, nine years back. So there was one incident happened and during 2011 or something like that. I just forgot the date. Uh, there was one incident happened in the Kali court. One lady for trying to give birth to the baby, right? Unfortunately, that baby was already died inside her. Now she was having difficulty to giving birth to that death baby, that death baby from her womb. So uh, the person there in our Kali Court Center, uh, the health worker, so he phoned uh, to our doctor, and it was in the middle of night, right around 9, 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. in the night, so he was giving a call. It was like an emergency during that time because uh, if, you can't, if she can't give, deliver the baby on time, she might uh, lose her life. So that's what the case during that time. So he called the doctors in, a, in that point. So the doctors, they all were in the hospitals. Very fortunate part was there. So he called him, them, uh, them and they immediately responded to, to them. And then within the two to three hours, uh, with the help of, you know, from the doctors from, from Kathmandu, they could, you know, help uh, that lady to give her birth to that, that, that baby. This is how the telemedicine project we have done from the past. Uh, for me, the telemedicine project is a little bit different thing for me because uh, I'm basically, you know, I really like to let you know that I'm basically involved in financial domain, financial digital financial technology. So I'm working on, on that part. You'll be bit surprised why I'm here in the healthcare sector if you are working in financial technology. It's because for me, to be in telemedicine is like an accident. I was in this project accidentally. You know, during 2009, I was working for one of the prominent people, one of the pro prominent uh, technology pe people here in Nepal, Mr. Munibata Sake. Uh, our local Nasar also knows better him. 
So I was working for him. He was, you know, he was trying to do something like very good thing to, you know, how he was thinking how technology can be used for people, how it can benefit the, you know, end users. So he was trying to, you know, researching on that part. And he was feeling quite hesitant to talk to me about this project, you know. But one day, accidentally, he spoke something about telemedicine. He said he wanted to do telemedicine. He was having very difficulty to, to find the, you know, site where we where we where he can implement that project. He was finding very difficult to find the doctors. He was finding that difficult to find the rural areas, rural communities. So he accidentally talked to me, and during that time also, the accidentally I met few people from Kalikot. You will get surprised if you know the, my story. I'm actually I belong to Kathmandu. I was born, I was raised, I was educated. Even my parents, my grandparents, I won't, even my grandparents, grandparents, or also uh, in all are born, raised, everything in Kathmandu. So how the people who is totally you know, located in Kathmandu can go to Kalikot and serve the people of Kalikot. It's, it might be quite interesting to you, like for you also, right? because I was socially, you know, I was involved in lots of social organizing at that time, and the people from Kalikot approached to me, and they, they just wanted to do something for Kalikot, so they approached to me, they talked to me, and uh, from there, the telemedicine, this project actually started. Let me give you the first uh, slide presentation. So you can see here some of the picture. So there in the center picture, there is a Muridba Sakheji, and there are the four doctors, who is initially uh, in starting point of the doctors there. And there in, if you see in, the, uh, in, in another photo, there is me, uh, helping our technical guys there in the Kalikot, how to set up. So as, if you just wanted to let you know that this, this telemedicine actually started in from officially, uh, if it's a, if it's just the, it's, it actually started from July 2010 with four young doctors who are just, uh, you know, who are very fresh out of medical schools. And then there is a one engineer, that's me, and there is a patron figure, all, phil all philanthropist, our Dr. Muni Sake, who has been leading this team. So this team was, you know, it was uh, approached by the, some of the team which I have mentioned. This is called the Rural Welfare Council. The, during that time, it was named the Rural Welfare Council. Now this, the, this organization doesn't exist now. It was during that time. So it was, the place was Sekhana, PDC. It is a very, you know, if you just uh, know about this place, it will take a day to reach that place. Because you know the, we, we know the headquarters of Kalikot is Manma. From Manma, it takes a day to reach that village. So we had, you know, we had the health worker from Kalikot, and we requested them to come to Kathmandu and get the training. And he went back and he took some of the equipment with him and set it there. So just like to let you know what is the problem statement in Kalikot. The first we all know, especially regarding our remote areas. That is our traditional beliefs and cultural practice. Still, a major problems uh, in our, our remote villages, which really you know creates, which really creates a low level of awareness because the people are very very, you know, they are not so aware of their health challenges. If you just stay there, the people they don't consume iodized salt, they don't have green vegetables, veggies in their diet, they don't take you know protein diet sufficiently. So that kind of thing, you know. Uh, really created at that time, and there no one counseling them. Especially if they didn't need any counseling, there is no one to really to counsel. So there is a map how we have done. So there is one map I have included here. So there is <clears throat> so for addressing that need, what we have used is, is interactive telemedicine model. So we know the there are three four models of telemedicine. There is store and forward, and there is like case consultation models, but we have used interactive telemedicine model where, where we are directly interacting with the local peoples, lo local patients there in Kalikot, where doctors are directly con uh, you know, talking to the doc patients with the help from uh, health workers uh, there, which they have, which we have given them a training. So it requires, what it, this technology requires is the both parties to be online at the same time, which requires stable internet. Now, you might have a question, you know, you will write the question. Is there any stable connection in the Kali code or not? I definitely said there is no any stable connection. We sometimes use the telephone also. By using a telephone also, we save the people's lives. Just I mentioned the stories, just starting my presentation that 
we save the people's life. How we save the people's life? We save the people's life by using simple telephone. Even though we don't, even though we don't use any smartphones or anything, but we use only simple telephone. By using telephone, we save the people's life. And for for conferencing, we use two open source software. One is Microsoft uh, Skype, and another is Busy. Busy. So I think you guys never have heard about this Busy. The Busy also were quite interesting teleconferencing tool. And during that time, we used that. And uh, you know, during 2010, 2011, there was a electricity shortage in uh, in our country. Power shortage in our country. So to address that power shortage, we use 80 watts computer, which, is, which can be operated by 12 volt, 12 volt um, battery source. So we we have used that kind of you know Intel Atom based CPU to you know run that telemedicine project. And much more interesting thing uh, that in that project is the local community has. 50 kilowatt of hydropower station is there already been established. So during that time, when the Kathmandu was suffering for eight hours or 12 hours of electricity cut off, Kalikot never have any electricity cut off. They have 24 hours of electricity during that time. So you know, for us, the site selection, for us, the people, for us, the resources which are located inside was you know we can't imagine. Like if you go to any project, you can't see such kind of you know combination happening at the same time I, I that's why i have you know earlier from my first uh, speech also what i have tried to tell you that this project it happened accidentally so there is very spam saying that if you want to do anything good whole universe conspires to you like so this thing happens there it's, it's like you know whole universe is conspiring like there is a whole electricity is there you have one minute left Okay, sir. I'll, I'll try to finish in within one minute. So, what are the technical challenges? The, you know, the basic technical challenge is the cost, cost regarding you know telecommunication and data management equipment. Also, the technical training. There is the cost, and and what, which I have highlighted in the bold. There are two major technical challenges which now telemedicine is going to face. This is one is single repository for the patient information. Do we do we have single repository for uh, patient information? I would say we don't have. And there is no smart contract between the patient and health care providers in order to share the patient information. Because we are sharing the information, right? We are sharing the information with others. But is there any smart contract is done between the patient and the health care provider to share the information? No any system right now provide. So there is a, this, these two challenge, technical challenges are there. So I will say there is a solution also for this. But I am not addressing the solution right now. I think the more uh, the, we have more technical solution going on, so I think we will have discussion on the solution also. So I would like to let you know about the solution. Solution is hyperlaser, blockchain, private blockchain. Blockchain will be the one of the disruptive technology, which will help us to you know, bridge this problem of single repository and smart contract. The outcome is we cover the Sipkhana uh, BDC. Not only do we cover Sipkhana, but we also cover the, some of the places from Bajura, Acham, and sometimes Jumla. And then, the unfortunate part for me is I only involved from 2010 to 2013 in this project, where we have served almost 3,500 people just for three years. And during that three years, if you see the tendency, uh, during the month of February to April, we have got the huge number of patients, and October to December. You know the why the situation is like that because during that time weather is good, and then after that there is weather is so bad. Some of the glimpses of this project, you can see some of the patients who visited, and then what I have said about this traditional beliefs and some uh, cultural beliefs, there is still the Chao Padi is a, is a bigger problem for us, especially the women are suffering from a great health risks. So I have kept one picture of this one also, and the telemedicine session which we did, and some of the childs also having suffering. So some of the news which was published, uh, it was published by the Kathmandu Post during 2012. So this, uh, so thank you. So this is my very thought. And uh, if, if you have any questions, please, I'm very open to any questions you have. Thank you. Uh, definitely, uh, your experience uh, we'll be using in our last session uh, in the group discussion. Uh, there are a lot of lessons we have to learn from you uh, because Calicut is a place where uh, even telecom industry is not much interested to invest in that area. Yeah. That's why infrastructure is very poor. Uh, although government has a very big uh, plan to have a 
fiber optics over there. Uh, let's see uh, when the fiber will be there. Uh, I think with this uh, remark, I think we have already run out of three minutes more. Uh, I think we can discuss uh, with you during a break time. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so can I conclude? Uh, uh, thank you, sir. So just 30 seconds only. I'll speak for 30 seconds. So right now I'm in Rotary. So Rotary also initiated some telemedicine projects. So we are doing two telemedicine projects right now in Bhaktapur Cancer Hospital and Kist Medical College with collaboration from Global Offsite Care, which is located in California. So the Global Offsite Care has presence over <coughs> almost 14 to 15 countries. So where, where we are connecting those people. So this is the project which I have presented right now. Uh, I have been involved only for three years. So that's why the, I have given you only three years data. So just please, uh, uh, just please take the note of that only, because this is the only three years project plan I have given you. So that's my that's that, that's the only I, I just try to clear out. Thank you very much for Thank giving you. me Thank this you. opportunity. Thank you. And I would like to request now uh, next presenter, Mr. Anis Patrai. Uh, he's a technical coordinator, e-health and telemedicine program, BP Koirala Institute of Health Science, Taran. He will be talking about telemedicine in Eastern Nepal, challenges and opportunities. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> if you are following the program schedule, I am not the person who has to be here. I am the next presenter. Um, I am Anish Patrai. I am the technical coordinator for the ELT and tele telemedicine program at BP Catches, Daran. Uh, this is a brief introduction of my institute. BP Kerala Institute of Health Sciences is a medical institute of, in Nepal. It was established in 1993 in Daran, a city located in Sunsar district in eastern Nepal. Uh, uh, today, I, I, now I talk about the telemedicine program. Uh, we have started telemedicine program in BP Catches uh, since 2015 uh, May, month of May. Now we have expanded our telemedicine sites uh, to six, it covers four, four districts, three administrative zones, two provinces, uh, and actually it is uh, focused on the eastern part of Nepal. This is the map of Nepal, and you can see the LH uh, part where our institute, institute is located, and we work uh, there. This is the map uh, where our telemedicine site is located. Mm. I talk about the opportunity that uh, gave us uh, by telemedicine. Uh, we are working on the remote places. We are not uh, far from the BP catches. You can see the 79, 79 kilometers is not uh, far distance, uh, but it is very, very difficult to access the health facility. We have a uh, uh, few sites. Uh, which is not uh, far from the distance, but uh, facility, health facility to uh, get by people is uh, difficult, uh, like Sidwa, Sidwa, one place in the eastern part of Nepal. This is 79 kilometers from the BP catches, but it is very hard to get public transport uh, to uh, come BP catches from the Sidwa itself. And we have another uh, site in Fikal. Uh, you, everybody, you may know the Ilam, this is uh, in Ilam district. Pickle is 145 kilometers far from the BP catches, and most of the patients cannot come to, cannot afford private, so, uh, private hospital, uh, which are in, in between PHC and the BP catches. They have to, if they want to get a treatment uh, very cheap, or they have to come to BP catches. And they have, if they want to come BP catches, they have to travel 100 foot, 145 kilometers from their village. And Bhospur, uh, we have one site in Bhospur district that is in uh, Pauli, that's called Pauli. Uh, this, that, I think this is the municipality now, but uh, this is very remote place. Uh, that place is 143 kilometers far from the BP catches, but uh, it takes more than six hours to uh, visit BP catches from that place. There is a one district hospital in between, but no adequate uh, facility for patient treatment. Most of the patients report to BP catches and other private hospitals where the uh, poor people cannot go to 
uh, go for the treatment. Actually, um, I'm the part of the member of telemedicine, and I, I'm proud to be uh, be in this uh, because we are working in the very remote places. This is the place uh, to go, Bhospur district, and there is one article uh, published in the uh, one newspaper. The I'd like to share with you the under construction road section section because became muddy after the rains obstructing passenger for of Bhospur and Sankra Sabha uh, from s smooth travel. The travelers are forced to walk some distance in their journey after the vehicles they are traveling on on get stuck in the mud at various parts of the road uh, section. Uh, imagine if there is a mm, there is a person who is sick and they, he cannot uh, walk. What will happen in that case? This is the road uh, and i'm not uh, i'm not going to com complain everything uh, in the telemedicine uh, we have some opportunity uh, also uh, in the telemedicine we have opportunity to uh, make a relationship with the other healthcare provider uh, it helps to upgrade the knowledge and skills of healthcare, healthcare provider working in such remote places. Uh, like I said before, um, in the consultant in the main site like uh, BP Cases or any other uh, big hospital, uh, the consultant can uh, see the diversity of cases. Uh, and if uh, people are, uh, uh, it is very easy. Telemedicine is, is useful and easy for follow-up um, cases also. And the, the challenges, there is some challenges uh, in the telemedicine as far as our uh, experience, awareness is the main thing. Uh, it looks like a high tech for the people who are not used used to on computer and in internet. It has to be addressed by the people who are working on the digital device. Uh, this is really very big challenge, and uh, there is no motivation to healthcare uh, health worker. Health personnel working on small village have a lot of work, uh, uh, which are assigned by the government and government and uh, private organization. Uh, sometimes, the, sometimes telemedicine becomes the least priority because uh, some providers give some incentive and training, but. Uh, We don't have fund, and the uh, uh, fund. That's why we cannot organize the training, or we cannot give uh, money uh, incentive uh, to them. That's why it is in list priority. And uh, uh, I think there is one uh, challenges uh, to work in the telemedicine is that government policy is not clear. Uh, there should be a treatment guidance for the telemedicine patient. Uh, and uh, uh, there are a lot of teleconferencing software, but I. I uh, um, I say uh, lack of easy accessible and free teleconferencing software is the uh, big problem. Like we have a six site and we, do, we cannot afford the uh, priority software. That's why we, we use uh, Skype. And in lack, lack of online EMR, uh, especially uh, designed and made for uh, telemedicine is also the uh, challenge. We don't, I, I, till now, I have not seen any uh, open source uh, uh, web application to for the telemedicine, actually uh, lack of uh, EMR for the telemedicine is not a challenge. It's a, uh, it's a opportunity for us because BP catches had have made one telemedicine uh, web application, especially designed for the uh, telemedicine uh, based on our experience. And this is the picture of picture how we do telemedicine. We use uh, uh, Skype, as I said before. And thank you. Thank you, Anisi. Uh, not for you open for a couple of queries, questions. Uh, thank you very much for sharing your experience. Uh, I'm Dr. Arvind from FEC Nepal. 
Uh, I'll, I'll just ask you a non-technical question because I think uh, it's uh, telemedicine is ju just not the technical thing. You need to have some sort of human touch in uh, telemedicine. And since you said in one of your slides that motivation of the health workers, do you really think that the health workers who are working in the remote areas, they are really interested, enthusiastic, and they are really using this uh, telemedicine? And do you really think that the consultants who are working in BPKIHS, and obviously they, they must be very busy over there, do you think that they are really interested? And uh, does uh, your institute have any designated person who looks after this telemedicine and who evaluates that whether really this telemedicine thing is working or not? So do you think this is uh, going towards the right direction? Or uh, there is technology is there, but people are not using it. So what do you think? Yeah. <clears throat> It depends person by person. I think um, some of, some people working in the remote village are very really very interested to work on telemedicine, and some are not. And uh, to be honest, in our experience, uh, uh, some people expect uh, some incentive to work on telemedicine. We have a team in uh, BPKHS. I think uh, Dr. Promendra he is in. Uh, doctor, a medical coordinator, he wants to say something. Good morning. I am Dr. Pravin Prasad Gupta, Associate Professor in Department of General Practice and Emergency Medicine in PP Coral Institute of Health Science. And I am one of the medical coordinator for this K Health and Telemedicine unit of BPKSS. Actually, this we work with support of University of Geneva. And we use the systems also which are provided by University of Geneva. In BPKSS, I'm looking after the medical part. And we have some doctors which are fixed from other departments, like from dermatology, from pediatrics, from psychiatry, who do all the those consultant between the remote and the main sites. And the thing that he asks is main is the motivation of the healthcare providers who are working in remote places. Actually, initially when we start this program, they were not motivated to start this. And we have lots of challenge to start in those places. We motivated by time to time, we gave them training. And after four or five months, they were able to start this program and we were able to run it successfully. Another the big thing which we achieved is Bhutani refugee camp, which is established in Damak. So Bhutani refugee camp, there were some centers. like They refer the patient from primary health care center, secondary health care center, and tertiary health care centers. We stabilized the telemedicine between primary and secondary health care centers. And they have given me a data. The referral rate, which was 59%, was decreased to 24% after being using of telemedicine. And that is the big thing which we have achieved right now after starting the telemedicine. And right in other places, I have also make a paper where I have shown that the consultation and referral rate from the remote places, which was not so much decreased, but it was decreased by 19%. So we have lots of challenges working with remote places, but we are trying to come up with all those challenges. Thank you. Uh, to add to that point of having uh, incentives, I'm Dr. Sandesh Mainari. I'm in, I've been working with Axe Foundation, uh, the same foundation that our Mr. Arjanu Bandari was talking about. I'm presently heading that foundation. So in terms of incentives, it's really tricky to have a local personnel working on that incentive. So you need to, I think my personal experience is to whether you're working with a private uh, health personnel or with a government health personnel. If you're working with a private health personnel, what you find mostly is they, have, they do have their own uh, shop. Pharmacy, they have their own pharmacy. The added incentive of having a consultant uh, work with them is that they can sell their uh, medicines and they will earn something from them. So that's the incentive when you're working with a private personnel. But when you're working with the government, so what happens is uh, the newer newer federal government is really easy to easier to work with the local federal government because the local governing body has uh, there's something uh, they have they can lead their own community. So the local elected uh, health person, also local, locally elected personnel uh, has their own council, health council, 
So they will make sure that the person who is working through the government will look after the telemedicine. So it is more of a force from the local community than more than an incentive basis itself. So I think the incentive is uh, more of a tricky situation uh, because it really depends upon whether you are working with the private or private. I think my experience is that. I think we'll be discussing this issue in our discussion session. I think we are, we are running out of time. Uh, we have ample of time to discuss in this issue. This current session is mainly on engineering side. Our side will discuss. We have enough time. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> now I'll request uh, Mr. Gunjan Ranjitkar. He's a system administrator of the Department of IT in IOM Teaching Hospital. Uh, he'll be talking about telemedicine in teaching hospital, IOM. Namaste, I'm Gunjan Rajikar. Uh, a very good morning. I'm working as a system administrator in uh, IOM, Institute of Medicine, Teaching Hospital. Uh, teaching Hospital, uh, inside Teaching Hospital, we have a department called uh, Institute of uh, Department of Information Technology, GIT, which was established since 17 September 2008, uh, which is to assist the fulfilling of IOM's main goal and to excel the medical education services and research. Our director is Dr. Prof. Professor Dr. Prati Boydia, who is in the front lead. Uh, uh, the idea uh, is to promote, develop, and deliver, facilitate the use of IT services and resources in IAM. And we, it is established to uh, update patients' data, research data, and advance in medi uh, medicine using telemedicine and teaching services. The main objective of IAM is to uh, to be the government's paperless hospital. This is the server room in our ID. We have like uh, um, more or two servers, which is uh, virtualized, and we are using nine servers at the same time. We have uh, recently updated with uh, Sophos uh, UTM devices, and uh, we uh, we uh, we have uh, Power UPS online backup. Uh, as well as an uh, inverter, generator, and uh, uh, local line, uh, electric, uh, 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 electric line. Uh, we have our optical fiber in IAM premises. This is the EVR of the IAM teaching hospital. Uh, the big, bigger one, uh, red, red, red one, is the 24 uh, core optical fiber. We have uh, Wi-Fi uh, uh, in most of the hospital areas. Only 75 persons is covered with uh, IM Wi-Fi, and we have also tried to go free Wi-Fi. Uh, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> this is the biometrics devices uh, for the attendance system in our uh, IM hospital premises. This is the IP camera we have installed, and we also serve for the maintenance of the desktop computers. Uh, ser a service as free of cost for de departments, staffs, and students. We have hosted uh, training three of the websites till now uh, in our own dom domain. These are the websites we are we are hosting. Uh, recently, we are using 100 Mbps uh, um, bandwidth and uh, NPIX as one gig network. But this is the recently. Uh, Bandwidth we are using. Uh, we have lowered the bandwidth cross and uh, uh, increased the bandwidth at the same time. These are the uh, your internet connection users at the same uh, at the at the time. The uh, users are being increasing uh, in the years. Uh, this is the IP camera recording system we have 
uh, in, in our IM. Uh, as far as we, we are work done, we have like 80%, 85% of IM to UTS and MNC. This is the uh, Marathon Medical Campus, Marathon Nursing Campus, Institute uh, of Medicine premises. Uh, we also host uh, IM web application in uh, IM entrance uh, regarding this uh, PCL, bachelor's, uh, MB MBBS, PG, which is MDMS and uh, DMMCS also. I'm uh, I'm admission in affiliate colleges, bachelor's online counseling, barcode and thumb code for uh, for for the for foreign students as well, faculty post verification, email, and most of the uh, technical uh, part of the thing. <clears throat> we also host uh, e-counseling services, which is a web-based application uh, where uh, the uh, participant don't have to be personally pr present, and they can. Uh, uh, register from the online services and can uh, the, uh, the, the candidate can be um, within the uh, uh, in, in the merit list uh, this is the uh, HMI system we are running till now in our own uh, uh, IM hospital premises which we develop by our own selves this is the uh, SMS system uh, where we notify students and all all the faculty members for the exam center, for the result, for the meeting, uh, for the seminars and all. Uh, for the faculty support, we have like free internet uh, connections at a time and free wireless internet connections for the personal laptops where they can come to our own department and they can they can use it. The printing uh, service is also very less, which is 10 rupees per per paper, which is color paper, and photocopy, uh, free faxing, free uh, scanning uh, those. <coughs> uh, training and classes by, by uh, DIT, which we have conducted uh, years back. This is the advanced uh, computer, computer training classes with uh, people in the college, Kathmandu. We are recently using Polycom VSX 7000 at, this, at the time, and as well as software, and we uh, uh, we did really use video portal at the at the time because like, we have to get some kind of uh, authority from Tamtech and all, and we are uh, testing most of the devices like uh, Teams from Microsoft. <clears throat> this was the video conference in Janampur Health Post where we we we, we use by the software. We have three of the parties can uh, talk at the same time. Uh, this was the palliative care classes to uh, staff of Model Hospital. And <clears throat> this is a uh, palliative care class conducted by hosp with hospice, uh, where Dr. Baidya he uh, conducted. Uh, he usually conduct with uh, in the um, with the hospice, uh, uh, which is located in Lungin Kill. This is the uh, hospice uh, conference with hospital uh, patients there. Uh, years back. Uh, we, uh, this was a uh, video conference with US, along with US embassy staff, where they couldn't connect in their own system, and we we tried to help them in in our own uh, in our own premises. Uh, this is the uh, picture of two days video uh, disaster nursing classes with nine of the countries uh, hosted by Temdec. and we also conduct. Uh, Tele teaching with I am on African nursing uh, colleges from Pokhara nursing campus, Bilgas nursing campus, and Bayro also at the same time. Uh, this was a test connection with uh, uh, South Korea and Pakistan, CPSP, uh, where we uh, have PG uh, classes. I want to introduce a smart health line where we uh, used to have a lot years back before the earthquake and uh, <clears throat> but recently uh, some of the due to some pro problem we couldn't connect at the uh, it was like stopped uh, we took the sample size of 100 we were uh, this at I am health line uh, usually take uh, only the phone calls uh, we, which was like uh, free of cost to connect to the IAM where a doctor he sits there for the whole session from 8 to 8 p.m. 
and uh, we connect uh, using the telephone line. <clears throat> this was the uh, um, record where a report of the uh, patient's call. The gap between the study and eight is due to the earthquake where we couldn't uh, connect at the same time. And the common questions were like uh, diarrhea, stomachache, and these are, these are some of the questions where they used to talk. And I, we also asked them if it was affected or not, and most of the um, answers were affected. Uh, but this program is closed due to some circumstances, uh, due to some staff there, due to some of We have uh, affiliated colleges, and we are planning to use office management system, web based mobile application, and can you can you wrap up your since it's time you are now. <laughs> okay, I don't just get, come to a conclusion. Uh, we are planning to use as a internet gateway uh, where we, where all the, all the internet users, our affiliated colleges, can use at the same time. Uh, where we connect from inter, uh, interconnected among colleges, hospital, that will be much more easier for and faster. Uh, for now, the problems in uh, in IAM is uh, we have like nano servers, mail servers, web servers, and DNS servers, but uh, there is no HA, and we also don't have control panel for the web for, uh, websites where where we use say like Linux commands, and the, uh, most of the problems is we is with the uh, Wi-Fi low bandwidth management system, Wi-Fi AP devices. Uh, we also have uh, the flat network, so we face most of the things in VLAN. <clears throat> and, still, and the user still uses Windows XP, and th that is the main problem for us. And this is uh, back of, uh, lack of due to manpower also. And uh, problems in telemedicine, te uh, teleteaching is uh, slightly reduced. And um, television also reduces uh, TAD and other allowances. Medical personnel also finds difficulty in using virtual communication devices. They are not used to with Windows XP, Windows uh, sorry, Windows 10, and other devices. There, medical person has more pa uh, patients to look after and less time to uh, time for the television tele tele saying There, thank you. <clears throat> so we are running out of time. Uh, any questions to him? We'll discuss during break. And during lunch time. Now I would like to request Mr. Pramod Gewali. Uh, he's the IT system admins from uh, Patan Academy of Health Sciences. Thank you. Problem with uh, his slides. I think uh, during that time, I would like to request Mr. Niraj Acharya. Uh, he is a network and system admin in Nepal Research and Education Network. Uh, he will be talking about condition of IT enrolled members institutions. Good morning, Namaste. I am Niraj Acharya. I am working in the uh, Nepal Research and Education Network as a uh, system network admin. Uh, and uh, as uh, we are the member-based organizations, we have a, a member 
institutions like hospitals, college, and research organizations. Uh, uh, we are working uh, so the telemedicine activities uh, so regarding. Uh, I just uh, give some descriptions about the telemedicine uh, work experience. Uh, previously, the Mr. Rosen has asked, uh, uh, "What are the experience?" I think I uh, fulfill some of his uh, questions because we are working together. Uh, since I forget, it's I, since 2012, uh, some from uh, upon sessions, uh, different life surgery, uh, we work together carrying cameras, Logitech cameras, and some speakers. Uh, and the doctors are seated there and communicated to, with the engineers in the Tamdek and others, uh, Seoul National University Hospitals, and others. And still, we, uh, we are doing uh, uh, some um, telemedicine activities with uh, Nepal Wireless using Nepal wireless network as well in the Nangi, in the uh, Magdi districts. And previously, the Kathmandu model has been either worked with uh, uh, Dolakha district. And especially I am, uh, when I joined the NAN, when I uh, experienced with the uh, Magdi districts most. And we visited some hospitals as well with, together with Rojan. And uh, we uh, have seen this uh, different uh, and geographic conditions and difficulties. Uh, there are some volunteers as working there as for uh, teachers, uh, uh, local community workers are working in the network part and as well some uh, health workers uh, to con communicate with doctor with the Kathmandu. So Rosen has also experience with that. Uh, so this, uh, uh, I just uh, complete this, uh, fulfill this part of the Rosen. And this time uh, my uh, Purpose to present is uh, regarding the information technology we are using, we are experiencing technical persons experience in the institutions, uh, in my point of view. The so information technology is a uh, vast thing. Uh, there are a lot of things, communication, network, database, internet, all these things are there. And what we uh, want IT service to be uh, when we go to the institutions in home and everywhere. So efficient, 24-7, uninterrupted, high-speed, quality of service. But we uh, didn't get uh, all the time. Uh, we facing the problems and problems, and all the blame come to the technical persons. And uh, but uh, uh, yes, there are problems. But we uh, technical persons ha are uh, identify what the problem is going on, and we tell other persons or administrators what are the going to happen and what are the solutions. That is our responsibility. So what we are getting, inefficient, on the level network, slow network, and what are the regions? So there are many regions. Uh, so there are several regions. There is a hardware failure sometimes, software failure sometimes, external network outages because uh, there is each you can see on those uh, fiber connectivity the looping on the poles and other things hanging and the, these are the we we are relying on that networks and some somewhere in the wireless technology it's uh, and local area network failure this is our internal network failure sometimes most of the times it happens and incapable local area network we are putting a whole full of tank of water and we don't have the glass to drink. So sometimes it happens. We have a high bandwidth, but we don't have the equipments to support that bandwidth. We don't have throughput. So technical persons should identify what is the exactly problem. We are increasing bandwidth or some other things, but we are not getting the proper quality and we are not utilizing uh, our, our service. So sometimes unsuitable hardware. So we, we got the hardware uh, for the uh, things, but it's not suitable for all the time. So we should think of that. Better service delivery, better networking, and give the better IT service delivery. So we, especially, uh, most of the problems comes from the network. So IT people are well aware of the network. So network architecture should be, so there is a comparison between the bad architecture and 
is the good architecture. So the IT people should identify which is the good and which is the bad. How our network is set up, how we are switch is cascading, mention that's unsuitable hardware. We have adequate amount of resource bandwidth, but not proper equipment distributed to the resource. Uh, we don't have the well uh, equipped router, a switch, not enterprise level. We are purchasing the home uh, uh, users. So, so role of IT people. That's a for, so try to understand the capacity of hardware, design efficient network, and try to understand network infrastructure and choose the best solution according to the requirement. Do not always follow the vendors. Study deep new, uh, deep in new technology before implement. And challenges and problems. Uh, either the make convince to the administration and the, the your higher level. So you have to always tell them you what is one the minute difference. left. Okay. So thank you, sir. Uh, and engage in other works rather than IT related works. I have feel that IT persons are working non IT uh, than understand things. Uh, so most of the focus should be uh, in his own job, first IT, and then others. So that's uh, my uh, one. That's my experience that I see the, the, the people, and to get IT uh, and server rooms. In many uh, institutions, uh, you can see that there's no any proper uh, server room, uh, uh, data uh, centers. So you have to advocate them. OK, we should need this to the administration and this to get the, deliver the good quality of network, because all the hospitals are going to the uh, uh, computer based. Conclusion is. Uh, only IT people could not do anything. All other people and departments should try to understand and situation and stay further to make it better. Collab collaborative approach will give better results to improve IT and its effectiveness. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Nirji. Definitely, uh, as you said, uh, only IT is not sufficient to make success. There are other issues also, uh, which we will be discussing and finalizing not by today, we'll initiate today uh, to be finalized very soon uh, with the policy guidelines to the government and our commitment. Uh, I think we are running out of time. Uh, one more. Yeah. Now I'd like to request uh, Mr. Pramod Gemali. I think his slide is ready now. He's IT system admin in Patan Academy of Health Sciences. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's uh, time is over, uh, and I'm in the last, so that I'll try to finish it in time. Uh, I'm Pramod Gyawali, and uh, working in uh, Patan Academy of Health Science in IT section. Uh, I don't want to uh, focus all those things. Uh, we sent our final year students to the uh, remote district place. Uh, uh, to learn and uh, to work with the people and uh, systems of government there. And, and for this one, uh, we made a BCR concept. And uh, that uh, concept uh, uh, for them uh, to get the guided learning uh, process, we engage them on that one. We use telemedicine or teleeducation or BCR uh, in that context. Now, uh, this is the <coughs> analyzed feedback from given by the students while they were posted in the remote location. And classes 
uh, run in rural sites every Friday. We have uh, two hours classes, and we send uh, them uh, topics one week before, and they discuss, they put the case, and uh, on Friday, uh, we'll discuss with the faculty at pass. And this is the one photo. And uh, it is in the remote locations. And uh, this feedback is taken from the uh, 2015 to 2017. And uh, there were open and closed questions. And uh, like it, uh, four point Likert scale we used on that one. Least appropriate is one. And the most appropriate uh, is four. Uh, <coughs> and there were 123 feedback uh, forms from the batch one, batch two, and batch three. And data collected from the peripheral sites, Gorkha, Nawalpurasi, and people, Etaunda, Noakot, and some of them, they didn't fill up. And close questions were uh, uh, in the Likert scale. And uh, that is, they told that the, uh, it can strengthen their ability to collaborate with classmates. They have given 3.1 out of 4. And they told they are connected three out of four, and their case presentation skill was three out of four. And 2015 and 2017, uh, there was a technical issue uh, we get uh, that its uh, uh, list was 2.8, and uh, in their uh, stability, again, others are OK, but technical challenges are there. And we get 2.8 out of 4. And the concern was the technical support. Students, they are self-engineers on their remote locations. And they, uh, they, will, they get uh, one or two hours orientation before they go to the district. And from there, they learn. And in between, if they get the problem, uh, uh, we will solve by sitting from here. That is the main one of the. And the sound system, it was uh, above 50% on that time, from 2015 to 2017. It is the data from the 2015 to 2017. And it is uh, increasing time to uh, nowadays. And analysis. Uh, or in satisfaction and dissatisfaction, open questions we have analyzed in. Under sat uh, uh, satisfaction, uh, out of 23, 19, they have given the positive comment, and uh, 12 of them, they are getting the uh, uh, feedback from the uh, center uh, to manage the case. And the major uh, concern, it is audio, mainly audio and video. And uh, what we found the, is that internet and class, uh, internet based learning and classroom based learning, they have uh, their learner satisfaction with their skills, uh, knowledge, and behavior. And uh, medical education overcoming the barriers in distance time and cost effectiveness. And uh, social, uh, they, uh, the main disadvantage they feel is that social isolation, upfront cost, and technical problems. And uh, <coughs> utilizing uh, e-learning can result in greater educational opportunities for students. And uh, like our country, uh, the infrastructure and human resource is the main uh, <coughs> problem for the institution as well as technical. And uh, to get the uh, vision for that one, uh, institutional readiness is also a main important tool. And uh, uh, student's objective was met so that we are running this program till date. And technology and uh, uh, investment was main challenges. Uh, and we do not have the adequate uh, uh, technology achievement till date. And, uh, Internet in rural sites, it's main challenge. Uh, suppose uh, one of the example is in our people. And uh, we try to connect with uh, hospital through the fiber. 
and the fiber uh, uh, it break down time to time then again and uh, we uh, uh, we run the systems from the sundar bazaar to wireless systems sundar bazaar to our people and it's running smoothly and uh, that is the problem for the uh, remote sites and the, the power supply power supply is also the main problem there and uh, the conclusion is uh, vcr uh, is impo important educational tool for the students who are uh, 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 stayed in rural sites to collaborate with colleagues and with their mentors the references are taken from there and thank you thank you uh, pramod ji I, I have one question to you. Uh, as the survey has been done, yeah, yes. two years ago, I think uh, you have a lot of findings from that survey. Uh, definitely, one of the finding is the poor network infrastructure is a hindrance for success of uh, this uh, virtual classroom. Has done any any improvement program in Patna yes. Hospital? Afterwards? Yes, after 2018, we. Oh, made uh, three or four changes in our systems, and uh, that is uh, uh, we uh, there was the mixer devices. It is very difficult for the non-technical person, non-IT person to use that one for the students there. And uh, we use the next uh, video conference audio equipments there, so that there is no plug and play. That is all. And next one is the. A camera for the video. We changed the camera, and uh, and we had a guideline uh, tool for the students and faculty, and we revised that one, and we increase uh, the testing time with the students. Uh, the students uh, are very busy in their uh, location, but uh, in the evening or any uh, their free time who try to test more and more so that the uh, class will be run successfully for that one and one recommendation for this one is that from the many uh, studies shows that uh, from the commercial networks it is quite difficult uh, to connect for the high level video transform uh, and uh, it is recommended that r and e networks should be reachable to the remote locations to get uh, the uh, smooth network that is thank you thank you uh, nepal research and education network is uh, working on that part yes. uh, we'll be bringing high speed network we are trying to have a gigabit network from uh, nkn national knowledge network from india uh, let's hope that network will be established uh, next thing is for video conferencing we recently uh, received 1000 uh, user license on Zoom. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, from the project from uh, Asia Connect and 10 Network. Uh, we will be uh, very soon uh, providing that uh, services to all our end members, including uh, partner hospital. I think you can enjoy that. That's a very good uh, service and, and it's free of cost. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, Ms. Koriko, uh, do you have any questions, queries? I'm closing yes, uh, overall, uh, I'm very uh, happy to join this uh, presentation. And I have one question. Uh, some the, of the institution have the connection with rural area, uh, uh, from the Mr. Anish and also the person from the Calicut uh, area and they show the picture of their rural area and I am wondering how they are connecting uh, mm -hmm. because uh, from photo uh, they said uh, they are not uh, have they don't have the sufficient electric power and so what kind yes. of network uh, they are using uh -huh. Uh, I cannot uh, imagine, so could you please uh, tell yes, me? Yes, I, I, I think you cannot imagine when you <laughs> you are in Fukuoka because uh, some of the rural areas it is very difficult and we are using wireless uh, connections and even like uh, ADSL 
simple connections, internet connections. But on the other hand, we have Kane network, Trans Eurasia Information Network, and with high bandwidth, we are actually having this teleconference, video conference. We are watching live surgery from Korea, Japan, with very high resolution. And actually, the use of that bandwidth is it's very minimal. Maybe we are using only 10 or 15 percent of that bandwidth, and we have to use that uh, more. Actually, we are using all sorts of uh, network, like uh, uh, from Viber or even Facebook or sometimes messengers, telephone calls. So uh, from very basic things to high high level bandwidth, we are using. Uh, so uh, maybe in the future we are increasing the uh, this fiber connection to many parts. So in coming days, that that may improve. So regarding Kalikoto, so I really like to let you know uh, the, how we connect uh, Kathmandu to Kalikot. So we used a uh, simple CDMA uh, sync from our Nepal Telecom. So we utilized our uh, CDMA network and we connected uh, the Kalikot to the Kathmandu. Then later on, the local community has shown the initiation of getting reset. You know, they reached to our Nepal Telecom, our telecommunication company. They pledged uh, them to provide the reset, and then later on they get the reset connection. So we basically we started with the CDMA, uh, which have uh, 256 kbps. It's quite slow bandwidth we utilized, but if you see the picture quality, is quite good, right? So we use the Skype, a very simple uh, video conferencing tool. Because we believe in saving price. We don't believe in expensive technology. We, we believe in very cheaper technology. Right now also we are working on uh, creating cheaper solutions. So, so we have utilized a very cheaper solution, CDMA call, and we, we, we have utilized uh, that kind of connection. So by that way, we have connected, we, are, we have successfully connected Kathmandu to Kalikot. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We are running out of time. Thank you. Uh, we'll have more discussion in other sessions as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Kuriko, for thank sharing this. Thank, thank you, Mr. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll be having a small break of 10 minutes for a tea break. Uh, then we will begin the session too. Thank you. <laughs>